great crowd, great crowd. I'm used to playing in front of a lot of fans, but I usually cannot see their faces. <laughs> Hi, Jet. My daughter's out there. I hear you. I love you. <laughs> uh, so my talk is called More Than an Athlete. Society walks into a young child's room wearing gym shorts, a jersey, and running sneakers. It sees this young child drawing dinosaurs on the wall. It stops and admire the work. It's quite magnificent for a child this age. Hmm, it's great. Then society is hit in the face by reality and it slaps the markers out of this kid's hands and says, dribble the ball, don't draw on walls. Run fast, you can't build apps. Do what they say, don't think, just play and make bank. Buy gold chains, waste good brains. Why change the world when you could play games? Reading in the locker room, now that's slang. Give an athlete a book, and they give you a look. Some even say, why should I read? These are the last gladiators we breed. You're not creative, you're an athlete. I think we all know what, creative, what a creative is. Um, everybody here tonight is creative. Um, we all have good imaginations, and some of us even have original ideas. But what is an athlete? Am I the only athlete here? Well, for starters, it's a noun, which is a person, place, or thing. Thank you very much, Texas a and for everything that you taught me. <laughs> An athlete is a person who is trained in or are good at sports, games, or exercises that require physical skill and strength. How many of you enjoy going for long walks on the beach? Work at the gym? Yoga? Pilates? Seven-hour sessions of CrossFit? I don't understand it. <laughs> a lot of, a lot of, a lot of people really enjoy doing it. So that would mean that everyone in this room today is an athlete. What? I thought I was going to be talking to a bunch of creatives today. I'm in here talking to a bunch of athletes. I'm right back in the locker room. <laughs> You're not creative. You're an athlete. You're not creative. You're an athlete. If someone tells you that enough times, you will begin to believe that it's true. I, however, do not believe that it's true one bit. I believe that every athlete in the world is creative. Just look around. You see, we, stint, we tend to separate the two ideas of being a creative and what an athlete is. It's an oxymoron, a creative athlete. Those don't exist. Can you guys even read? I tend to separate myself in two halves, the creative half and the athletic half. I fear as a creative, I would never be accepted as an athlete, and an athlete, I would never be accepted as a creative. And this is something I've been doing since I was a young kid. Sometimes I used to get B's on purpose just to fit in in the locker room. Yeah, yeah, y'all got C's, man. I only got an 89. I didn't quite get 100. I missed a couple questions on purpose just so I could hang out with you guys. <laughs> Teacher pulled me to, hey, why are you get a B? You knew that. I saw you quit that right answer, but then you selected uh, another one. I was like, yeah, you know, that one just got me. Um, <laughs> see, I'm from, I'm from Houston, Texas. And if you know anything about Texas, you know it goes football, oil, and then God. You can flip two and three depending on who you talk to that's from Texas. I grew up in a community where kids felt like you had to dribble a ball or catch a ball or run fast to get out of a situation or to stay out of jail or just to be alive. Because if you're an athlete, the, the gangs wouldn't bother you because you had a chance. See, there was many proven athletes across the world that we saw, like Rags and Richards, a story that we knew. We knew that we had a chance as a basketball player or a football player. A creative? Black? we never seen that. That's not what we do. We dribble. Black kids, I grew up learning that black kids, we stiff arm your kids to the ground as we run and score a touchdown holding our hands up. We dunk on your kids. Black kids don't score soundtracks. We rap and hit the quan. <laughs> black kids don't do magic. That's what white kids do. Unless you have really cool white friends, which I had a couple of those, so you know, I got to do a little bit of magic on the side, but that's not what black kids do. <laughs> black kids don't make movies, we make highlight films. That's what we do, you tune in to watch us do highlight films. You don't see us make movies, there weren't any examples of that. I'm one of those black kids. Roll the tape. Five minutes to curtain, Mr. Cosmo. Great. From Martellus Bennett, 
the world's number one storyteller, according to his mom. Hey, Cosmo, they're here. Got it. The Imagination Agency presents the number one warm and fuzzy film of the summer. All right, Cosmo. It's showtime. Zuvi, a warm and fuzzy t tale coming soon. Hey, Turtle, nice job on the voice. Thanks, man. <clears throat> oh, thanks, man. People are going to love this. Pretty great highlights, huh? <laughs> Not what you expect. I think you just probably watching ESPN earlier. You probably see me on there still forming somebody, which is a great highlight. But this is something that's much more powerful. See, when I was a kid, I didn't only dream of being the next Michael Jordan, LeBron James, Emma Smith. These are dreams that we had. What? Hakeem Olajuwon from Houston, he did the dream shake. I don't know if you know anything about the dream shake, but it was magnificent. It looked like he traveled, but he didn't travel at all. He still made the shot. I also dreamed to be the next Dr. Seuss, Royal Dahl, Tim Burton, Shel Silverstein, Ed Catmull, John Lasseter, Walt Disney, Willy Wonka. <laughs> I always imagined having a chocolate factory that was crazier than Willy Wonka's. I would just have giant people that made chocolate instead of the short ones because I'm still kind of self-conscious about being tall so I figured if I had Oopa Loopas I'd feel very tall so I figured I would have giant Oopa Loopas making my chocolate these were and still are my dreams I'm still dreaming get your head out of the clouds and get your head in the game is what the world tells me you're an athlete you can't do that when you look at me what do you see are you tempted to ask me what sport do I play that's the co most common question we get on the elevator. What sport do you play? Well, I'm a doctor. <laughs> I, do, I do open heart surgeries on the weekends. <laughs> do you see a children's book, Arthur? No, we imagine those being little petite people sitting in a room, drinking tea, thinking of with a soft voice that you don't see a masculine man with tattoos that's a beast on the football field that will run you over. <laughs> Write a children's book? That's not what you imagine. When you look at me, you don't see an animated film director. That guy makes movies? He does animation? He's an athlete. He can, those guys can't do that. See, when we look at athletes, we, we don't see them as people. We tend to see them as athletes. We don't see the husband, the father, the son, the mother, the businessman, the scholar, honor roll students. When athletes... When we see athletes, we see number 83, number 10. No name. Oh, that's number 83 for the Chicago Bears. That's Michael Bennett, number 72 for Seattle. Seahawks, wow. We don't see who they are as people. People tend to forget that athlete has dreams and aspirations because we are people as well. Athlete is just what we do. It's not who we are. I create because I have to. I play football because I want to. See, a couple years ago, I used to look in the mirror and see the exact same thing. Oh, what you're saying was correct. I look in the mirror and be like, man, those biceps look good today. Look at that. <laughs> those glutes, those glutes are nice. The great glutes. I mean, one of my favorite part, I, can't, I look forward to waking up every single morning because I get to see myself. Like, oh, got to brush my teeth. There he is, the handsome young fella you are. <laughs> Man, you look great today, Marty. Oh, yes, Marty, great day. What kind of toothpaste is that? That's crash. Y'all oh, great. Let's go. <laughs> but something magnificent happened a couple, two years ago. I had a beautiful daughter named Jet, my wife, Siggy, and I. There we go. It's my daughter, Jet, my wife, Siggy, and myself. I'm the, the big, strong black guy. That's me. So a couple years ago, we had, a, we had a daughter. She'd be two. Some of the people got to meet her, and she made a lot of friends here on Orcas Island. This is one of the friendly places I've ever been. It's almost like Edward Scissorhands in a little bit in the beginning of the movie. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, where was I? Yeah, so two years ago, we had, we had this beautiful little girl. I, I never believed in love at first sight. Baby, I love you, but I never believed in love at first sight. 
until the moment I held my daughter. And at that moment, I started thinking, what would her dreams be? What would she want to be? I would tell her that she could be anything in the world that she wanted to be. The world is your oyster, whatever that means. This is what I would tell her. <laughs> the world is your oyster. Just put a little hot sauce on it before you eat it, daughter. <laughs> it's what I would tell her. But then I started thinking, how could I tell her that she could be anything in the world that she wanted to be if I didn't go out to become everything in the world that I wanted to be? The best way to lead would be by example. Some famous dude once said, be the change you wish to see in the world. Famous dudes are pretty smart. <laughs> so that, that day I had this revelation, or epiphany, whichever word you choose to use. So I started this company called Imagination Agency. I would write stories. I'm like, this is my childhood dream. This is something I could show her that she could do. Anything is possible. The only way I could show her is to show her the possibilities. So I started this company, Imagination Agency. TIA is like the CIA, but for imagination. I would write stories about monsters, villains, heroes, superheroes, girls that saved the world, boys that saved the world, dogs that could talk, people who couldn't talk, but the dogs could, because I like dogs to talk more than people. It would be a great story to tell. This would be great, let's start this company. So, and I did it out of love, finding out what my dreams were and fulfilling those dreams so that I could show her that she could be wherever that she wanted to be in the world. This is. Hmm? The funny thing about this is that um, my wife is the balloon dog and my daughter is Jet and I'm the guy in the dinosaur suit and we blew her up, uh, which is kind of like what my household is like every day. It's like she's still looking over us, and, but we blew her up and that's what we did. Because I, before I showed my films, I felt like I would give people what my home was like. And that's what this is. With the Imagination Agency, I have written 10, 10, 12 children's books, I've written novels, I've made my first animated short film, I wrote my first full feature film, I've been in a meeting with Nickelodeon. Creativity has taken me so far, ball has taken me very far as well, but creativity I feel like it's a lifelong thing. So from books to stories, just the many characters I created, I do this all in my house where my daughter could grow up and watch daddy create, because she always sees daddy play football, but what else is daddy into? When I die, I don't want my daughter to go to my funeral and be like, my dad had a great stiff arm. Did you see him run down the scene? Boy, was he fast with the ball in his hand. I want her to be able to retell, retell my stories. I want to be the guy on Big Fish. I don't want to be Denzel Washington and Remember the Titans, which was a great movie, but that's not my dream. My dream is for her to always have something where she can hear daddy's voice even when I'm not around. So I, be able, I began to create and create and create. And my days went from practice football, run, practice train, hang out with the family, create, run, practice, train, hang out with the family, create. And this is just what I've been doing over the last two years. And through the last two years, I've just rediscovered myself and I've never been happier with who I am as a person, as a being. I feel like if a caterpillar could climb into a tree and go into a cocoon and come out this beautiful butterfly, then how come we can't recreate the way we reimagine the way we think of the athlete? For the young kids out there that want to be athletes, I'll tell you this, every ball loses air. Eventually, every ball will go flat, but that doesn't mean that your life will flatline. What will you do when the game is over? Thank you. <laughs>